So hello students, uh, you welcome once again to another video of mine. And uh, this is the 13th day. Apologies, this is coming late. We have uh, technical issues. We have to attend to. And uh, today we are going to be looking into the refraction of light. And here we're going to talk about the prism, both rectangular and triangular, apparent depth and real depth, as well as the lateral displacement. From when objects have been shifted, we also talk about the TIR, we call total internal reflection, and also look into critical angles, and also talk about tackle questions on the lenses, that is a uh, converging and diverging lens, and uh, talk about more and more important things. Now, you should all know that this video covers uh, the concept of refraction of light, and it's going to be in form of a checklist as a uh, questions new pattern questions from UTM and YHEC. So for quick revision, that is the essence of doing this video. Full concept video available on the most the academic physics channel. You can kindly subscribe or like the channel if you find anything interesting. So let's get started with the topic of refraction. Now, the first question. When a ray of, of light passes from water to, to glass, it should be true. I think that is an error from the most the academic team it dash now to understand this you might have studied the topic of refraction of light in your junior classes and like i do say if you are yet to watch if this is your first time of studying the topic you can watch the concept video and if you don't have the time also my explanation here is also enough for you to actually get all what you need to get with respect to your your examination now when we talk about refraction it is just the apparent change in the direction of light as it passes from one medium to another. Let's quickly look at this illustration. Now, we have two media. A quick concept, which we only talk about what is needed for now. And uh, you have two media as shown according to what I have here. Say sorry about the diagram. I don't fancy that one. So I would like to actually produce another one. So like, like as you can see, these are media. So let's say we are talking about air towards to glass or yet to water now according to a man called jonathan snells i won't talk too much about concept because for your level you don't need that much when the light ray is incident we've done refraction concept and checklist as well as the light is changing medium from air to water as it touches this boundary it will change course of direction so it will bend oh wow <laughs> i don't know i've changed that it will bend in this direction you can see it has changing it is changing direction so you see this is normal which i said is always perpendicular to surface so this is incident ray this is refracted ray we will call it normal ray we call it nr ir so angle between the incident ray and the normal remember angle of incidence remember we also talk about the refracted ray reflected ray is always equal to angle of incident. That's what we go in this format. So, but this time around, we are focusing on refraction. This is the refracted ray. So, now, according to a man, because they have media, we have media, it's changing media, speed changes, you have uh, wavelength changes, but one thing does not change is what, what you call the frequency, which we have also discussed in our last section of reflection now and waves as well. Now, to understand this very well, now, according to the man, because the yeah, is media, we take we now define another parameter we call the constant, which we call refractive indices. Now, for now, you should always understand the law was actually telling you that fine, as you move from one medium to another, the velocity of what of the what of that particular substance, light in this case, is changing as you move from one point to another. We are discussing light. Now, for that case, you can always say the rate of light, the way we do it for you in junior classes, or the change in velocity of light from one meter is always equals to let me just give you in terms of the way you guys are used to what to know the formula because if i give you my way my way is better no doubt about that but i just want it to be your way now we now define refractive in this in terms of the change in speed now according to jonathan says so the mu this refractive refractive index i'm denoted by mu most of you are used to n mu sine theta of this media is the same thing as what mu sine theta of this media so I will take this one as theta 2 and this one as theta 1. So it now relates mu sine theta 1 is equals to mu sine theta 2. Mu is refractive index, the way you define. 
and he said it is always what constant. So this is how you come about the popular saying of your refractive index. And from that, now we have also studied that what refractive index is always the change in speed of light in vacuum over what over the medium. So this is the definition we call most of you are used to writing as velocity in vacuum, which is also good. You can keep it in mind. Divided by the velocity in medium. 20% of your question under this will come on this. So you need to understand that what the density of medium are changing. And because they are changing, the area of light also what is also going to change direction. So keep this as a note. You can keep it at the back of your mind. Like when light is being incident on the body and it is moving from a rear medium, in your junior classes, you call it air. For example, it's vacuum. Refractive index of air is taken to be a unit. When I say unit, I mean one. So air is said to be a rear medium. You say less dense medium. The way you call it in your junior classes and water is denser than air so when the ray of light this is called a dense medium the way we interpret it just for quick concept that you need to know before you answer question so i'll still talk about other things which is also important so according to this man now when the ray of light move from a less dense medium to a dense medium the ray of light is going to bend towards the normal ray. you can see the direction of normal what about if it is opposite? Now, when a ray of light is moving from a denser medium to a rear medium, you guys are used to less dense medium, the ray of light will now bend away from normal. Now, what I've drawn here, draw, drawn here is a ray of light that is passing from a less dense medium. Air is less dense than water. It will bend towards normal. If it is the other way around, it will bend in such a way that what the angle of refraction will be more. And these have been done experimentally in your junior classes for those of you who have actually you are through with junior classes. And for those of you who are still in class in your in your schools or various schools, all these experiments are what you have done. I believe so. And if not, you can still get the idea that is needed to carry out the experiment when you are doing the refraction of light. Now, my, my definition now, from what I've said, a ray of light can move from a dense medium to a denser medium. The media we take, vacuum is air. It has, it's the, let's say it's the least of them all. Then you can say water is denser than air. Then another one you use very well is the glass prism. Glass is denser than water. So always keep it in mind. If it moves in this direction, it will always bend towards normal. That is moving from a less, less dense to a denser medium but if it moves in the other way it will bend away from normal so it's a simple question you just classify the media water then glass excuse me water is less than 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 glass it will bend towards normal and choice b is correct for this question so that is all about the first question of day 13 we have 12 questions to talk about under this chapter the next is our uh, a beam of light is incident from air to water. You can see now, air to water, that is also going to bend towards normal. At an angle of 30 degrees, find the angle of refraction if the refractive index is 4 over 3. Now, from what I've said here, the definition according to Snell's, he said, uh, now, if we consider what each of the media, the constant is refractive index, and the sign of the angle of the first media must be equal to that of the second one, which is said it, it is always like that for all media. You can have more than two media. But for your level, we are only going to consider what is needed to pass your examination. So now, be that as it may, we can say now from here, we can just say we define the refractive index for your level as well, from what I've talked about. The first media, which is sine of angle, the first media is having incident is the angle there, sine of angle of incident divided by what? The second media, which is the sine, which is constant, the sine of angle of refraction. I think you have studied this in your junior classes, which is very important for you to know. Most of you are used to writing refractive indices as N. So always keep that at the back of your mind. So if it has moved from air to water, the only thing you just need to keep in mind here. It's just the interpretation of how to put your stuff. It has moved from air to water. So if you are using air, I'm used to using mu. You understand? The fatty index of water was given. I told you as four over three. It's a very simple question. Now, this way of like the meaning of refractive index of water simply means this has moved from air to what? 
to water. Please note that air to water. That is what I have just shown there. And uh, it has a refractive index of 4 over 3. Please note that. That is the interpretation. So basically, I will also give you a very simple stuff here, which I think you need to know. You can also relate refractive index in terms of the speed. For example, it is so simple to understand that mu 1, that is the first media over the speed at this side, we can say, let's take it as initial speed as u, is equals to mu 2 at this second media when it has changed direction, refractive index 2 is equals to what the final velocity at this point we write as v. So what I'm trying to say basically, you know, which is same thing as sine i over sine r, is also for you to keep in mind as mu 2 over u1 is equals to sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. Why I'm giving you this is because of new pattern of question for you to understand the way it is being done. You can see we write this one as what relative refractive index of 2 with respect to 1. So you have mu 2 over mu 1 is equals to sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. This relationship is good for you to keep in mind in the case of giving you the particular two refractive indices and what different time. You can see the second one over the first one equals to the sine of angle of the first one over the what the second one. This is the relationship we talked about when we talk about what the refra relative refractiveness with respect to each other. So it's also important. This is a simple question, but I'm only telling you other things you can see and how you can actually tackle them. So I have to have a full max. Now, the identity is a very simple. The meaning of this, it has moved on. It means refractive. You can see it's ended here of water means it moves from what's very to water. So the way we interpret that, we have just talked about that. We said refractive index is sine i over r. So refractive index of water given, I'm using this expression now, 4 over 3, because to now sine i in a, because it's moving from air to water. In air, you can see. So you can see it's incident in air at an angle of 30 air to water that is sine that is a 30 over sine r which is what you are looking for you can see the beam of light is here find the angle of refraction sine r so i think this is now very simple and straightforward for us to do so directly we can just do this on simplification do i need to waste time you can see that uh, i can make sine r subject of formula Please, students, you know that sine 30 is 1 by 2. 1 by 2 means 0 0.5 or 1 over 2. So sine, this is 3 times 1 over 2. That's 3 over 2 divided by, you can see what I'm 3 times sine 30 divided by 4. I'm just showing you this is 3 over 2 times 1 over 4. I hope students remember this. This is 3 over 8. So from your mathematics, sine r is equals to 3 by 8. R will be equals to sine inverse. I hope students can press sine inverse of 3 over 8. So how do you press that to be shift sine then 3 over 8? So on simplification, 3 over 8 is 0 0.375. So simplification from here, because I'm good in all these other kind of sine stuff, the correct answer today should be 22 degree. And I think that is the right answer. So that's that about that shift sine of 3 over 8. So most of the pattern of name one will only leave the answer like this and not will not give you like it because you may not be able to use what calculator and has sign on top of it so be careful about find answers and how to work how to get that and that is the answer to the second question for the cutting now the third question we move to the next slide why right. about this question we have very good now an object is placed directly below a glass block of thickness of 3.0 centimeter. Calculate the lateral displacement of the object if the refractive index is 1.5. Now, this is another thing, of, another concept of what we call refraction at plane surfaces. Now, there are two cases, but I think for your level, basically, the cases you are going to talk about for your level is just a single case, whereby you have an object, a quick illustration, a quick concept, to understand the concept very well, you can also watch the full concept video available on Musti Academy Physics channel. And if you find anything interesting, like I do say, you can always subscribe and on your notification button. So I just hope we are good, we are moving, and please, you always have to hold up your note because it's important you have that. Now, let's talk about 
the first case, which is talking about shifting of object, that is displacement of objects, which you guys call lateral or apparent displacement in your level. Now, but in that level, we call it shifting object. When you shift object, it's going to be refracted and some things are going to be changed. So let's take some cases. The first case we want to get take care is uh, when object is what? When we are talking about apparent displacement or apparent depth of an object, I just want to take this as normal rate. I'm going to take true normal. Let me incident two at the same time. Just for you, for the case of some tough questions for the level you think is tough, nothing is tough if you understand the concept. That has been my way from what? From what? The way I explain in my classes and offline classes. Now, back to what we are talking about now. If a of incident, if the object is below the observer, there's an object here now. That's case one, which most of your question or examiner for your level will always ask this. Real depth over apparent depth is refractive in this. You have studied that in your junior classes. This is how they come about. It's so simple. The version I'm telling you is not going to be important under this concept. Application is the most important thing, and that is what we are trying to cover. Now, be that as it may, we can now say object is below observer. Observer eyes is here. So this is observer, just for case of understanding. A quick one. I don't want to use more up to one hour to run this because we are now in the most important topic. From now to the end of the, all the topics, we are taking the most important chapter, which I think I need to get you guys. Uh, I need to explain to you in details. Now, now for understanding sake, you can say the ray of light was incident here. As ray of light was incident, let's let's take. We have talked about from the objects now. You can see when the object comes here, what happened? It's going to be refracted. So let me just take my refraction like this. So don't worry, it has bent. Now the second object I'll just take for illustration's sake is incident like this. What do I know? It's also going to be refracted, you know, to change direction. That is what we have studied. Now, talking about where the image will be from, you can see the position of the object. Object is placed here. This is the object here. Look at the observer looking at this now. The observer way is going to visualize. I'm just giving you my own words, my own way of explaining. There are different ways you can have a bucket of water drawn, read depth. This is better because when you have two what two situations whereby you are actually having what two type of objects that is what are two different cases of a shifting of object. And you can see the first refraction and the second refraction. So the point of image is what the point of intersection in physics. What we do is we trace this first one. To this just for illustration's take diagram not done to scale and we trace the second play of light to this then let's say they are meeting somewhere and I'm there not drawn to scale you know I have to draw a better diagram for you next time this is what the observer is seeing now the observer that is directly here is seeing this oh wow my hand is not straight I was thinking I can draw that straight now this is the observer picture let me just show you the observer can see wow even with my nice head is not for me the straight line so whatever whatever might be the case i love i just want you guys to see what the observer is seeing and uh what is being pretty this is the object so the distance from here to here here to here now let me go with my marker let me use a red is the height so the height from the top to the bottom is the read three height whereby what the observer is seeing is from here to where he's looking at it. We always draw eyes, something like this in physics. You guys are used to all those things in your junior classes. In fact, we, we can put the, the the air of the eyes. The next topic is optical instrument. Then we are going to talk about uh, how to understand some concept about eye and camera. Now, now about this, not to waste your time. Now, the total depth from the top to the bottom is the real depth. So we call that one the H, the real depth. We have here now to here. Diagram not drawn to scale, just is the real depth of the image. That is, this is the pool, and that is that. Then, what this man is seeing from this point to this point here to where the image is seen is called the apparent depth. Let's just extend this apparent depth. So, now we now define refractive index N. Or uh, which you guys I'm not used to that end because whenever I write n, it feels as if I'm writing another thing. It is defined as mu. <laughs> but you guys are knowing it as n, it doesn't change anything. It's not given as the real depth of our parents that the way your teacher might have explained to you in your junior classes. So now, but 
you can say how did they come about the derivation are there on my channel you can always watch now this is very simple we say the height of the, the total height the real height is this the real height but what about when the object is being shifted that is what we call displacement now when object is being shifted now you can see it's shifted from this point to another point now let's say it has moved to another point what you understand is what that particular type of situation now make us define another parameter we call lateral displacement so shifting of the when object is shifting in case observer is up and what the object is done what you use is what the shifting object the shifting rule which we call the displacement let me just write for you directly you may not see it may be your first time of seeing this one it's always the real depth i'll just write that one as rd open bracket one minus one by mu mu which is what refractive index always use this one whenever you are looking for what the displacement but for your level you can keep it in mind that the displacement of an object that is shifting of an object is always equals to the real depth minus apparent depth junior classes way is also good so you can get any of these first if you get any of this then you can now get your the other one then substitute you have your answer but you want to get answer directly you, you can use this one you are going to have your answer so the read is also called the thickness for the sake of those that are not used to understanding grammar so let's just use that for you now so that's the first case whereby the displacement is already for the second case when observer is done and what object is up it is very very different the case too this will not work but for your for your level you can see directly below the glass block this one is on that so but for the case too for the case of because new methods are coming the displacement when it is upside down you understand what i mean object is up observer is back the displacement is always given as i will tell you although you may not see it in your text material so <laughs> that is why i'm here it's always equals to real depth then you say open bracket the refractive index mu minus one so keep that in mind this is also very good for you to know and always keep this two formula in mind my concept video has actually explained all these in details but for your examination like i just said this is enough for you to actually catch what you want in your examination if you follow it from a to z now back to business in this question object is placed directly below observer this is the case if the thickness is still a real depth is still Calculate the lateral displacement displacement of the object. If the refractive object is one, mu is 1.5. So directly, I can substitute here. Real depth is uh, 3. Open bra, 1 minus 1 over 1.5 is equal as 3 over 2. I hope you so understand that mathematics. On simplification, this is 3 open bra. This is 1 minus 2 over 3. What have I done? I have only flipped. 3 over 2 because of 1 that is object to 2 over 3. So directly I can say this is 3 multiplied by 1 minus 2 over 3 is 1 over 3. I hope you understand that LCM stuff. So on simplification, 3 times 1 over 3 is going to give me 1, which is the question answer. So 1 centimeter is correct for this question, and that is choice A. So this is the way you solve. And if you want to use your traditional method of uh, real depth over apparent depth, 1.5 equals to 3 over x, you get to apparent depth. After getting it, you come to displacement is real depth minus apparent depth, then you subtract and you have the answer 3 minus 2. It's going to give you 1 as well. So, direct formula, traditional method, anyone you guys are used to, just make sure what you are solving is absolutely solved well. I hope you understand that, and that is that about that. So, we move to the next question. About the next question, we have a ray of light is incident. A ray of light is incident at an at an at angle 30 degree on one face of a glass prism. I hope we are here. What is the angle of deviation of the ray as it passes from air to glass? The ray of light is passing from air to glass. So we've talked about glass lab, and if you are just joining us now, this is uh, the situation we are trying to talk about. Let me be quick to change the diagram and draw for you for visualization experience. Now let's take a glass lab to understand this. We are going to pick a glass lab, and we are going to draw like that. Now we have a glass lab. So for you to see, now a ray of light is incident to the glass lab. I change back to my normal arrow now let's take this as the normal ray as usual we have talked about when a ray of light is incident 
it is going to be what refracted. So let's say incidentally, not drawn to scale, it is moving from air, vacuum, air, vacuum, air to glass. This is the glass. What happened? Less dense or rarer medium to a denser medium. It's going to bend towards the normal. So the ray of light will bend like this towards the normal. Now, as it continues to go here, what happened is going to emerge to the air. It's going to come out. Don't worry about grammar. If grammar is your problem, I will help you break it down. So it will emerge to the air like this. So that is another refraction that's taking place. Now, when we talk about deviation, as we have told you on that, the reflection of light concept. Deviation is also possible because the ray of light is changing course. Look at here, we call this one the angle of incident, already study, and we call this one the angle of ref refraction, refraction. And Snell say N is sine R over sine R, sine I over sine R, air to glass, as refractive index of glass. That's the meaning. That is sine of incident in air, right? Over sign of incidence in refraction in, in glass. Definition, we have talked about that not quite long. Now, let us also be informed. While you are giving reflective index of glass, means it is moving from a point to that glass. Do you understand? This is the interpretation. And that was what I was telling you. Mu sin theta 1 is equal to mu sin theta 2. I'm using N for you because I know you, most of you, you are used to N as refractive index. I told you I use mu. I'm used to mu for now. Let me use your hand for you so that you won't get it twisted. Now, deviation. The ray of light is coming in this form before. Look at the way it was coming. Before it changes direction, it was coming like this. So let's say it continues like that. You can see the way it will move. It's going to move in that direction. And that particular thing where I can say that it has been refracted, that means the deviation angle, it has what? It has deviated from this point to this point. We call the deviation angle D. You can see I only trace the incident ray was brought forward. Do you understand? So it has deviated by a distance of G because it has changed course. So now we can say from corresponding angle are equal, mathematics student. Angle here is equal to the total angle here because they are the same thing. It has only bent and deviate. You understand? So we can say R plus D, the way we interpret it's good, is equal to A. Is equal to what am I writing? <laughs> R plus D is equal to I. Corresponding angles are equal, right? I will show you every details, don't worry. Corresponding angles are equal. Now, from here, that means if I can get the angle of refraction, I can get the division angle because the question asks for the angle of division as a ray passes from air to glass. From air to glass. I mean, the refractive index of glass. What is sign of angle of incidence? Sign 30, you can see. Sine 30 is 1 over 2. We just talked about that. Over sine of angle of refraction, we don't know. Sine R. Refractive index from air to glass, which is refractive index of glass, is 1.5. Is equal to 1 over 2 divided by sine R. On simplification, we cross multiply. I'm going to finish that uh, sign because I know you can't see. I'm writing on top of something there. Sine R will be equal to 1 over 2 over 1 over 5 is 3 over 2. Sine R on simplification will be 1 over 3 times 2 over 3. So that is 1 over 3, if I'm not mistaken. So 1 over 3 is that, I saying 0 0.333 degrees. So on simplification, you can try as much and make R subject of formula, which will be sine inverse of 1 by 3 or 1 over 3. So if you punch your calculator, 0 0.333333 repeating, we give you shift and sign. That should be 19.5. So refractive angle R is equals to 19.5. Okay. That is what I'm getting for R. But I'm looking for the deviation angle. And I know that R plus D, the angle from here to here is the angle from here to here. We call that corresponding angle is equals to R. My R is 19.5 plus D equals to angle of incidence was given to be 10. I hope you are there. Then on simplification, we say D is equals to 30 minus 19.5. And here D will be equals to 10.5 degree. So according to the option, we look for the one that has 10.5. I think is the first answer. 
And that is the answer to that question. So be careful about the vision. This is the way you conclude the vision. And that is the concept of the vision angle. If you are seeing that for the first time, put it down. And the angle here is for the margin trade, which is always equal to the incident rate for the reason of here. So that's just that for now. We go to the next question. I think the next question is not calculation. Thank God. I'm not going to waste time on this one. Then this question is testing us on our understanding of concept which of the following conditions are sufficient for total internal reflection tir very good now that means we need to what to understand the concept of total internal reflection now for conditions of total internal reflection students must understand some of these concepts one of the most important concepts you need to keep in mind is what the direction of ray of light for you to have the TIR, you have to understand the following concept. Now, we need to understand that for total internal reflection to occur, this thing, guys, I can start drawing because of our time, TIR is total internal reflection. Ray of light must travel from a dense medium to a less dense medium. Like we said, ray of light must, that means ray of light must bend away from normal. Let's talk about that. As the first thing, as the first thing, you need to keep in your mind. And if that occur, that means the angle of incidence for total internal reflection, angle of incidence must be greater than the critical angle. So these two conditions must be met before you can talk about TIR, which we call total internal reflection. So the question is, how do I explain this to you? Because I am bringing another thing, which is called critical angle. How is critical angle and how is it defined? So now you need to understand. And how do you understand? Then I will have to draw. Now, for this question, it is simple because which of the following is sufficient for total internal reflection? I told you a light wave must pass from a denser medium to a less dense medium. Absolutely correct. Roman figure two, light, light must pass from a less dense You can see when the first one is correct, the second will be wrong because they are contradicting each other. Angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle is correct. Angle of incidence, you can see, is wrong. The only correct answer to this is option one and option three. Then you go for the option. One and two, no. One and three, option D is the right answer to But the question is, you only cram, which is not done in my own class. You don't understand how it's come about. We have application of TIR, total internal reflection in physics. One of the first ones you might have studied in your junior classes is optical illusion we call mirage. Mirage, mirage. I hope you have studied mirage in your junior classes. And if not, you can also listen to what we call mirage. Now, mirage is, can be explained as a progressive bending of light. The condition about mirage, which you've heard about for some of you, is what for mirage work, which is application of TIR. I say application of TIR, optical illusion, mirage, which is, I said, it is caused as a result of progressive bending of light that is changing the direction of the light through a warmer layer, temperature, high temperature. And you say this is as a result, result of decreasing, let me just write the bottom point, decreasing refractive indexes. Refractive index. As a result of what? High temperature. As a result, let me just write a note, a result of high temperature. I told you this quickly, quick concept. That you just need to keep in mind. So, mirage is the subset of the, all the application of another application is optical fiber, which I think I also need to talk about. Some of you might not have time to watch once the video. This one should be enough in the way I will explain. So, what we are talking about is what ray of light must come from optical dense medium to a less dense medium, just like what I did in the other time. Let me just bring something for understanding of this one and explain the concept of that. Time is always a major constraint, and that is why I'm rushing. Sorry, apologies for rushing you. I am not like that. I just have to 
make sure all these things we talked about them. So ray of light must travel from if we say it is moving from here, oh my god. Just calm down. This is air to glass. You can see that glass is denser. So if a ray of light is coming, it will come from a denser medium. You can see just like what we did the other time. Because now instead of it to bend towards normal, it will bend away from normal. We talked about that. No, normal should be like this, but it will bend away from normal. Now the angle here, normal is always perpendicular to surface. So with the five, when this angle here is 90 degrees, now the ray of light here, you can see what happened here, the, depending on the value of the angle here, we say critical angle is defined in terms of this, which I will explain now, just hold on. Ray of light is coming, we have studied that ray of light will be ref refracted. So my refraction is it will change direction, it will bend away from normal, you know why? Because, why? Because the ray of light is what is, uh, refracting that's the first stage i'm supposed to draw a different diagram i'm going to put all the diagram to get together so relax yourself because this is so simple it is not hard you can see this is the normal refraction but if this thing is now 90 degree the type of refraction you are going to see is what all the ray of light that is here everything that is here i'm going to show you that is why i am here to explain all concepts without all the ray of light the one that is here now we now come down and we now move it like the ray of light that is coming here we now form a straight line this is what i'm talking about we have to draw again wow it is not easy to teach concepts in a quick way like this but it is good for you guys to understand everything once and for all so if the angle is now 90 degree because now we have the critical angle of glass approximately from experiment is 42 degree i will talk about that now now just for you to understand where if this thing is now 90 degree, which we define another property of critical angle, the ray of light that is now, oh wow, I have hit a pen. The ray of light that is now coming from here, from the glass, you know I'm talking, I'm moving from air to glass. The ray of light that is now coming from air to glass, instead of it now, all the ray of light will now be absorbed because now the angle is now 90 degree here. Glass has what? critical angle of what 42 so now all the ray of light will now be absorbed by this it will now all the, the, the refraction will now be into this direction so we say it has now been reflected like this now you can remember that this is the incident angle don't forget about that this is refraction angle now this was the incident in this case it was not 90 here this was the refraction angle you can see angle between the refracted ray and the normal here to here so be careful about this is the refraction angle now in this case now my point is this particular point where all the ray of light has now moved what has now been absorbed and has moved like a straight line all the ray of light here has been critical about this point so this we define as critical angle so we now define the what the snes law the snes constant what you call refractive indices mu as uh the inverse of the critical angle we call sine c because at this particular point, or you say the critical angle of a ray of light is defined as the inverse of what? Refractive index. From what I gave you in the beginning, mu sine theta 1 equals to mu sine theta 2. At this point now, what we are having is what? This is air. The air ray now has now what has now taken all the refracted ray. And we have told you that what? The refractive index of air was 1. So that is how they come about this formula for derivation, say, which I am not doing because it is not needed. So this is another important formula you need to keep in mind. Then as the refractive, as the angle of incident here continue to increase, are you guys listening? As you continue to increase the refractive index here, the ray, you know, the ray is at this point. Next thing you see that all the ray that is here, we now fall back to what where they are coming from. Place time is not on my side. I'm being signal yet to be fast a little bit. So the ray of light will now come back to where it is coming from as the incident angle increases. So all the ray will now fall back. And at that point, we say all the ray of light has been totally what reflected. So and that is what we call the total internal reflection. It's explained in three ways. The first way is that incident ray was moved from the glass to air that is denser to a less dense medium. And at that point, 
what you understand is what the ray of light gains away from the monarch. Normal. As the ray of light is increasing, incidentally continue to increase and reaches 90 degrees, it will be what? It will reach a point of critical point where we say all the ray of light will move on a straight line, will be equal to what? The refractive index of the air. So at that point, we define critical angle, which is inverse of refractive index. Keep this formula at the back of your mind, very important. And the last point here is that as the incident angle continues to increase, Every ray of light that is now what that is being equal to that of the refractive index of air, we now go back to where they are coming from. And at that point, we say the what the ray of light has been totally what it total what totally or internally reflected. So the ray of light has been what reflected totally. So because it has now come back to where it started. So we've answered the question, but we only need to understand another important concept. And uh, that is why I'm taking my time on this because we are talking about checklist, which we explain everything you need to know as quickly as possible. I hope you understand that. And we have quick answer for the question. We have to pick answer for this one very quickly. The next question A glass prism, let me use the blue now. A glass prism is made of material of refractive index 1.86. That is refractive index of glass. Now we have concept, so we need to be fast 1.86. And has a refractive angle of 60. Refractive angle A is called 60 degree. Wow. <laughs> we have to explain concept again there. The prism is immersed into water and the refractive index of water is 1.33 N of water. I'm writing N for you because you guys are used to N. I continue to write mu to cause confusion. Either mu of N is called refractive index. Determine the minimum deviation, DM. Wow. Is equal to question mark. Well, wow. and I don't have space here. We have to clean this. Again, I have to explain concept, guys. I'm not the one. It is the nature of the question set by most the academic team. You just have to understand them. They want the best from you guys in your forthcoming examination. So that is why they are setting these actual questions. Now, refraction in triangular prism, we need to understand that. Now, now that we have explained a good concept of understanding the concept of uh, triangle, please. One. Now, this is a triangular prism. Well, I want you to sit down and I don't want sit and be straight, please. Fine. So now let's just talk about how it is being done. Now, we talk about an important concept. Now we talk about critical angle. We say when a ray of light, listen, guys. Is moving from uh, the denser medium to less dense medium. It has the possibility to be what to undergo TIR, which we call total internal reflection. Fine. Now, if that is possible, there are some also, also the conditions you look in in your what in bending your ray. One of the conditions is when the ray of light is moving from there to glass. One thing you need to understand for triangular prism like this is I'm going to bring out what you need. Now, one of the things you keep in mind is that we use a 45 degree prism because of the critical angle. I will tell you all this needs to be known. Now, if incident angle is greater than critical angle, critical angle of class is approximately taken to be 45. Oh, wow. Why am I doing this? 45, excuse me, 42 degrees. That is the critical angle of glass from experiment. Refractive index of grass is 1.5. So if you want to calculate critical angle, you can just say sine C equals to 1 over refractive index, mu or N. So just say 1 over 1.5 and get that. You are going to see that it's approximately 42 degrees. That's how they come about that for those of you who want to, who are critical or critical about knowing what, how I come about everything. That is that. So if the refractive index, now, if the angle of incidence is greater than critical angle, then you expect what total internal reflection to occur. You can say angle of incident is greater than critical angle, total internal reflection. So when we do refraction in prism, we will obey all those because they are normal incidence rate. But for your level, I won't talk too much. The basic level, what you just need to know, the revision is available on my channel for now. We will not derive anything. If a ray of light is incident, we use a 45 degree prism because we don't want what we, we just want what the ray of light to actually fall back to where they are coming from. Now, if I incident ray on this, a quick one, we say inside the glass prism, the ray will be what? Minimally deviated here. I hope I've picked that. Then it will move like this. Then on coming to the one, you can know it's moving from here to glass. 
then it is minimally deviated because it's moving from what air to glass now it is now moving from glass to air what do you expect it bends what it bends away from normal now if it bends away from now this is glass now it wants to move back to here it will refract back so it will now bend away from normal diagram not down to scale it's supposed to touch here so now you can bring the normal here let's bring the normal here out this is the way the experiment you do in your junior classes and if you do not perform the experiment, it's not the end of the world. You can watch my concept video on this. Now, you can bring this in such a way that they will meet so that you can form a quadrilateral. So, because we still need what they call positive angle of a quadrilateral. Now, incidence, refraction, incident one, refraction one, incident two. You know, this way, as it was deviated inside the air, minimally deviation. We talked about deviation the other time. So we say the angle here, A, this is called angle of the prism, prism angle. So now we define another thing, another concept we call minimum deviation, DM. Now, what do we call DM? We say the minimum deviation or this is angle of prism, prism angle. A, I'm coming to that. Now, if we define another thing we call deviation angle, we say incident ray brought forward. If I bring this thing to the forward, and refracted, you can see it is refracted in the air, and the refracted ray brought backward. Concept the angle between incident ray brought forward and refracted ray brought backward is called DM, which we call minimum deviation. So, with respect to this, we can now start defining a lot of things. So, this is a cyclic, uh, I said this, this is a collateral, an opposite angle of a collateral is supplementary. So, I can start bringing formulas and stuff like that. This is angle of refraction of one. This is angle of refraction of two. So from my logic of mathematics, we know that uh, we can say, now we can say A is equals to R plus R, and A is equals to two R. So we say the prism angle is two times the angle of refraction, one important formula. Another important formula, if we go by this, if this is A, this is 180 minus A. I'm, no, I'm not supposed to be deriving the formula now, just for you to know the formula you need to know. So then if I continue, this is incident one, refraction one, incident two, refraction two. So the ray of light will emerge to the air at the same angle at which it was incident. That is the concept of what? Triangular prism. So always keep in mind the angle on top of glass prism here is called prism angle A. And the one we call GM is called deviation. Incident ray brought forward, refracted ray brought forward, backward. Angle between them is called minimum deviation. Remember, Jonathan Snell says refractive index is sine i over sine r. Now, from my derivation, it's available in my concept video. Mu is now equals to, if you make i a formula from here, a triangle equals to sum of two opposite interior angle of a triangle and stuff like that, you're going to get this, is going to give you. Sine i in terms of what simplification. Let me just do it. We have a sine one by two. That's half. Let me just write it. It will give you one by two dm plus a. Then make r sorry for formula r equals to a over two. So this is that sine a over two. So this formula you can keep it in mind that when you have question on triangular prism to solve question on triangular prism, you have to keep that formula. Of triangular prism at the back of your mind. So the refractive index is equal to sine half dm plus a over sine half a or sine a over two. So whereby a is the what angle of prism here, yeah. dm is minimum deviation. You know, it was incident, it was what minimally deviated, then it was all later refracted. So on solving all these things, I have done the concept. Derivation is not important for now. Application of the formula. So your sine i over sine r for triangular glass prism for normal. For this 45 degree prism, this is the type of formula you use, and this formula is common in junior classes. So, be that as it may, I think I can now solve the question that I have before me. Time is not on our side. I'm being given a particular minute now. I'm using more than that because I'm explaining too much. But that notwithstanding, I want you guys to get it. That is why I'm taking my time to do all this series of explanation. So, permit me, please. And let's solve this question now. We are looking for the minimum deviation angle dm in this case refractive index we have two refractive index no that means it is it's going to be the absolute refractive index is the way we define it and i can tell you now glass is denser than what than water it was the mass in water so you expect the refractive index of the absolute refractive index from water to glass the way we define will be refractive index of glass 
over refractive index of water. Please always keep it in that water to glass means from glass to, you can see that of glass. I told you from one and two absolute refractive index, refractive index with respect to water. It should be for glass. From water to glass means refractive index of glass with respect to water. That's G by W. So keep that in mind because I need that in these two cases. It should be 1.86 divided by 1.33. I need to get calculator to that because I don't have here. I'll just leave it like that. So on simplification, guys, let's use the formula. The fractive index now is 1.86 divided by 1.33 is equals to sine. I'm using this direct formula. Sine 1 by 2 as half dm plus a. Angle of prism. It is equilateral angle as prism angle, refracting angle, or prism angle, anyhow you call it 60 over sine a over two sine what is a that's sine 30 let's just do it like that on plus multiplication i'm going to plus one by sine 30 is 0.5 if i multiply see this i'm going to continue from this side for understanding sake 1.86 i don't have calculator over 1.33 times 0.5 what have i done my dear students i have only cross multiplied let's move this to this side sorry for blocking the the add then is equals to you can see i have sine half dm plus a whatever whatever that is here i hope you understand so i have sine one by two minimum deviation i'm looking for plus 60. i hope students understand this your mathematics knowledge is going to be tested here it's important you know mathematics and if you want to know mathematics you need to know it well it's important now what you are going to do is press all this one on calculator 1.86 most the team please let me do that very quickly 1.86 divided by 1.33 multiplied by 0.5 okay they are giving me this is equals to please you can confirm what they are saying they said this is nothing but is 0.6992 everything here according to the most d team here is 0.6992 is equals to sine half gm plus 60. now how do you remove sine you take arc sine of both sides so I continue that from this side, my dear student, for ease of access. So you to see clearly from this side, I move it here. So take arc sine of both sides. Doing that, my dear student, we say sine inverse, this arc sine of 0 0.699 is equal to now. Sine inverse will remove what is here, my dear student. So what you are left with is sine inverse will remove sine. So we are left with one over two. Please keep that in mind. I've only applied mathematics, mathematics way. This is gm plus 60. Time is not on my side. Most the team sine inverse will be 0 0.6992 992 of your answer. Please be fast. No time. Okay, very good. Most the team said this is 44. Please confirm. 44.4 degrees. These questions are for white students mainly. Is equals to 1 over 2 into bracket dm plus 60. What do I know? I can cross multiply. These two come here. So 44.2 times 44.4 times 2 should be 88.8. .8. Is equals to dm plus 60. For simplification, makes of the formula 88.8 .8 minus 60 is 28.8 .8 degree will be the minimum division angle and that is the question answer. So thank most of for supporting with your calculator now. So the answer to the question here is our C and that is the correct uh, the correct answer to this. So the answer here is our C choice C is correct to that question. And we move to the next class. So please keep it in mind when you are doing a kind of uh, what do you call it this type of question in, uh, in your examination be careful about knowing that at this point you cannot say you want to multiply you have to remove sign you have to take arc sign of both sides so please keep that that's only technicality there and keep this formula in mind the revision of this formula is, uh, is available on most the academic physics channel so you can always watch if you are the type you are in the level classes because the revision might be important for you in some cases now we move to the next one Fine. Now, this is what you have told you on a reflection. That is why question on this are not been taken that much. But we can also go back and see if we can recall what we have studied. Now, on what we have studied, we have question that says if the magnification of the virtual image. Now you can see the magnification of the virtual image formed by an object is 10 centimeters from a convex lens. The only concept I will teach here is that convex is converging. Convex lens is converging lens. And they are also called concave mirror. Let's keep that at the back of your mind. So all those things we have learned in reflection 
we are still the same thing under lenses, which we are still going to talk more about on optical instruments tomorrow by the grace of God. So on simplification, we can also say here concave mirror or concave lens as the one that diverged lens. They are called diverging lens. Diverging lens. Or it is also called convex mirror. Remember, convex mirror, the type of image they produce is virtual right and diminished. Now, but this is lens. We are still going to talk more about optical instrument, whether you understand more. Concave lens are those ones that look like this. They mostly like this is biconcave, convex rather. It's biconvex. You can also have a many scores and you can also have a plan. I will still talk more about that later. For now, let me just focus on what I'm to solve. This is a simple question because we've talked about this in our last class. So because we've talked about this in the last class, maybe I should leave it for you guys to solve. Because I don't think this one is uh, a question you shouldn't be able to solve. But for you guys that you did, are just joining us, this is what you are just to use. Direct formula I've given to them. This is what I said in the last class that uh, we have formula of mirror formula is always one over f is equals one over v plus one over u. And and uh, what's it called? The magnification of lens is v over u. And uh, which other thing did I talk about? I said we not have different ways, different interpretation, different standards. We now give to formula which I have talked about under the concept of reflection. So now let's talk about this one. Magnification of the virtual image will produce magnification is steady. Let me just help you write steady. Virtual image was produced from an object U is a 10 centimeter. The focal length. Remember what I gave you? M equals to F over U minus F. So this is the formula which we actually we talked about it in the last lesson. So if we have talked about it, all you just need to do in this question is just to substitute. But you have to be careful. What type of image is produced on that virtual image? I told you about my own convention of sign. So if it is virtual image, magnification is negative. Keep that at the back of your mind. So I'm using this magnification to be negative because it is virtual image. I hope you understand that. And if you have issues with that, please let me know to explain better. So now substituting now, magnification is minus 3 is equals to the focal length is uh, given to be, the focal length is given to be 10. I said the focal length, the focal length is what you are looking for. And the object's distance is 10 minus f. You can see it's a simple question. Cross multiply here, you are going to have minus 30. I'm cross multiplying. This is what I did. Minus 3 open brackets 10 minus f is equals to f. So I'm expanding. I'll distribute minus 3 minus 30 plus 3f is equals to f. On simplification, minus 30 is equals to minus 2f. So f here can be equals to equals 15. So which is the right answer to the question? I hope you understand that. And if you have any youth that can watch the reflection video. So because we've talked about that, always keep it in mind about convention for it is possible for a con convex lens to give you what a what a kind of what virtual image when the object is positioned between the focus and the pole. So that is just the same thing we have studied on concave mirror. So which I think we are still going to look into very soon. Question eight. I am too slow. What is the approximate critical angle? Critical angle for total internal reflection of a diamond if the refractive index is 2.42. We've talked about critical angle is denoted by sine of C is equals to 1 over mu, which is refractive index. So 1 over 2.42. Mosi Academy, 1 over 2.42 is what? Please, or I leave this one for you guys to finish. Then you get that C will now be equals to X sine of 1 over 2.42. So that's, that's about that. Because the academic team are telling me it is 24. Please confirm on your own if it is 24. And if it is not 24, please pick the right answer and drop it in the comment section. So that is that about that. It's approximately 24.4, but it's 24. And I go with them, which is the answer. So, guys, that's that about that. We go to the next question. I think this is the fifth, the fifth page, and this is question nine and question ten. Out of twelve questions, I'm 
actually have passed the one hour benchmark. Now let's see this a quick one. P PQR is an equilateral glass. Very good. Uh, because it is an equilateral glass, the angle of prism is going to be 60. I hope you know what it means. Some of angle the triangle is 180. So refractive index N is 1.5 PQ. Oh, it's an equilateral glass. P prism of refractive. P is a prism of refractive index 1.5. I'm not understanding this. In fact, PQ has shown in the figure. Light incident normally in the face of R. That is not incident on the face of R. Light was incident in the face of PQ. I just support the option will be correct. Now, what I'm talking about, guys, here, you can see that this was 90 degree. Very good. This is a normal incident. Normal, normal. So if we go by that, normal incident will follow the same path. I told you, you can see because it's normal incident, there are three types of incident. If it is common, like the one we talk about, minimally deviated here, normal incident will follow a straight line. When a ray of light is coming, normal incident, I just want to show you, it will come like this. This is normal incident, straight line. Normal means perpendicular to the surface, you understand? So normal incident follow the same path. As it touches air, uh, you know now, the refraction can come. Two things is going to happen. Now let's just take this as a normal here now, taking the normal at the point here. I'm supposed to use another color to understand this. Now, the normal incident rate of this coming like this will continue to come straight line. And now here, refraction will occur. Now the nature of the refraction is in two ways. So supposed to shift this thing because we have, I can tell you normal, let's just say, Another normal can be perpendicular. This is another normal. For understanding sake about the rate, the way this thing is going to move. Now, it can actually bend towards normal or bend away from normal. Let's do a little bit of geometry. Now, this is 90 degree. This is 60 degree. I hope you understand. So let's call this angle angle X degree. And uh, maybe we call this one angle Y degree. And uh, maybe we call this one angle Z degree. Just for you to see the way it's going to bend. I just wanted to see something. So let's get X and Y, X, Y, and Z from our knowledge. Now, but let's look at the way this thing is going to bend. It's coming. Refractive index is always equal to sine I over sine R or sine C. And you know, I need critical angle. If a ray of light is traveling now, it's not traveling from glass to air. It's and it undergo to time time reflection. So let's see the direction it will undergo. Maybe it will fall back like this, or it will come like this. It depends. On the critical angle. Now, from what we have studied, wow, <clears throat> I will not be funny. From what we have studied, we said critical angle sine C. Time is not on my side, guys. I have to be fast. Critical angle sine C is equal to one over refractive index. On simplification, most detail, please help me. One over this is simple because it's 1.5, it should be 42. That is refractive index of glass because I know that. So C is equal to sine. Act sign, I told you this one before, 1 over 1.5. So it will be 42. Refractive index of glass is 42. Look at this, that if refractive index of glass is 42, what you just need to understand is that what? Let's get the actual, the ray of light that is coming here that was incident. Let's get the angle at which it was. It touches this place. Now, this angle was uh, 90. Like I told you, the total angle here also is 90, but this is normal. Like this is normal. You told you normal is always perpendicular to surface. You know, it's coming on a straight line. So you can say y plus s is 90. You guys know that very well. So hope you understand that y plus s is 90. So we can say y plus, uh, look at this now. I want to do a kind of uh, simple mathematics, which I believe you should be able to understand. From this triangle, look at this triangle. I can get the value of one. You guys know a stereo angle is equal to sum of two opposites and three angles. See, this, this, and this. I will do a lot of math, a, a kind of simple math now. My point is that uh, you can see from here that we can say x plus y is equal to 90. First equation, which is simple. Because I told you the total angle here is 90. It is coming normal. Normal means 90 degrees, normal to the plane. Now, we can also say this y plus 60. You can see the angle here is 60 now. Y plus 60 is equal to 90. You can see how did I come about that? Oh, I said Y plus 60. X plus 60 is equal to 90. X plus 60 is equal because this, I told you something the other time. This is a stereo angle is equal to sum of two opposites in three angle with triangle. I'm doing the kind of mathematics. So X plus 60 
is equal to another person can say oh, wow it's so simple to do this thing if i don't want to waste my time this also is what this side is also 90. another person that love triangle so now takes this triangle this triangle 60 plus 90 plus x is equals to 180. you will get the same thing as what i have done here so it's not necessary you follow my point if you know what you are doing this is just a little bit of geometry why am i doing this you will ask me do i like disturbing myself x is 30 for me, I can get y. Y is what? Equals to 60. The question is just, I want to know the direction in which this area of light that is normal incident will bend to. Now, from what I have calculated now, I can see that the value of my y is 60. So, is y is 60. It is greater than the critical angle of 42. Now, since y is greater than the critical angle of 42, total internal reflection will occur at this particular point, as this thing touches P out here, as it touches here, it will come back. So it will now what? This is what I want to show you now. The ray of light will now come back. Now, total internal reflection will occur here. So when you what you understand what? As the total internal reflection occurs at P out here, now the angle of incidence here, you can see, watch something. If this is uh, 60, this is 30. 60 plus 30, you know, S is 30, Y is 60. I can get Z at this point because I want you to see something now. I can get Z. Now, if I want to get Z now, Z will also be because 60, 30, you can see, it's so simple. Now, 60, 30, you can see, the angle Z here is the same thing as the angle here because this line is making this, you can see, incident refraction. Now, if I want to do this, I can say, let me put the values for understanding sake x angle is 30 let me use a red time is not on my side in fact i've overspent time but explanation is getting too much then this y angle is uh, my y answer was 60. so i can get my z answer so you have to understand this now that the z answer is equals to this angle which is 60. this angle here is also equals to 60. Z is also equals to 60. So keep that at the back of your mind. So Z is also equals to 60. So the ray of light that is coming like this, the angle I have here, like I said, the value of the value of angle I have here, the value here was 30 degree. And sorry, the angle here was at Y here was at 60 degree. And because it is 60 degrees, 60 degrees greater than the critical angle of glass, which was 42. What I expect is what? The ray of light will be what? Put that we undergo TIR at PR, and when it undergo TIR at PR, what I also need to keep in mind what is what is going to be reflected away from normal. Why is it away from normal? Because ray of light is traveling from glass to air, so it's going to fall back to where it is coming from here. Why? Because angle critical angle is 42. My angle of refraction incident angle here was a uh, 60 at this point. You can see incident angle at this point was 60. And because incident angle, you can see angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. So the fraction angle change in direction that we talk that we are talking about at this point. I'm trying to pick up this. Please pick up. No time again. Then you expect the ray of light to what it is going to come back here. And when it's come back here, what you expect is what it bends away from the normal because it's now coming to the air. So it will emerge here and bend away from the normal. So you expect something like this to occur. And this type of ray diagram is called normal incidence. Now, 90 degrees, in, in a nutshell, if I want to go through all these processes or explanation of all these things, coming, something coming from normal will continue to move at normal. I get it. The, the shortcut is that this is 90, this is 90, this is 60. 60 plus what will give you 90? This is 30. So if this is 30, this is 60. 60 plus 30 also must be 90 because normal is always perpendicular to surface. So if this is 90 here, yeah, this is also 90. This is 30, this must be 60. So 60, 60, 60. Angle of incidence, you can see 60 here, yeah, 60 here. Yeah. So now I need to get critical angle of the incident angle. It was incident at 60 here. Yeah. So if it want to bend away from normal or an angle total internal reflection, the angle of incidence must be greater than the critical angle. Yes, it is. 60 is greater than 42. The ray of light will be totally internal reflected at PR. And it will now refract away. The reason why it is refracting away is that the angle QR here is not perpendicular to what to this particular angle. So you don't expect total internal inversion to take place at what at T QR. Total internal inversion will not take away at QR because this QR is not perpendicular because it's not normal. 
this one is normal to the line of this, but the line I draw here is just normal to this surface. So total internal pressure will not occur to only what emerged to the air at that. So that is the explanation to that. Concept video will tell you more. To pick answer to this, not to waste your time. I've actually explained everything so I can pick answer. And I'll go to the internal at PR and emerge to the R to face QR at this one. Well, let's check. Now, from what I've said, I don't think this is right. Why it is right is it will now go to the impression of PR correct. Then emerge normal. It was not emerge normal to face QR. So only. Now look at B, emerge at PR. This is rubbish. On I go TIR at PR, correct? And emerge refracted away. You can see. Emergence was refracted away on the, you know, when it's going to KR, it's refract away on QR. So this is the right answer. C is correct to this question. So D is also very wrong. And E is really also very wrong. So let's talk about this question. And about this question, I have six minutes more. I'm sorry, I'm going to be fast. We've talked about this in, in under the concave lens. Now, this is the diverging lens. Diverging lens always diverge ray of light. This is also diverging lens. And these are converging lens, which we call concave lens, convex lens, convex lens, or converging lens. So just look at that. Look at the object. As the ray of light is coming, this diverge. So, and the one that is passing through the center will remain undeviated. It goes <laughs> on a straight line. So, this is correct. Look at this ray of light object is here. It's coming like this. It's supposed to diverge. It's converge. So, this type of lens, diverging lens, don't converge. Yet. So, this is wrong. That is the way we do this. Now, look at this as well. This is a converging lens. Object was placed between F and P. Ray of light is coming. As it's come here, it's supposed to converge. You understand? And here it is diverging. So, this is also very wrong. Then the last one, look at ray of light, very good. This is a converging lens. Let me show you what happened here. Ray of light is placed as P. As ray of light was coming from here, you can see it was not coming directly. The object is here. As the object comes here, we just need to be careful about this because these are technical question which we need to not to make mistake. So look at this now. Ray of light was coming here. As ray of light comes here, what happened? It touches here, it's converged. You can see it's converged. And the one that is passing through what the center remain on the data. So Converse lens converge, diverge, uh, divided by concave lens diverge. That is the definition of principal focus of a lens. I'm very sorry about being rushing you guys now because the right answer to this is one and four. And I think which option, which option? So the answer to this is what? This. The question I don't read is since which are following correctly represent the diagram for locating the image of P of an object O on the lens. So you can see I've explained diverging, this diverge, this converge. Lenses. And that is the way we interpret that. So, guys, the last phase, wow, wow, wow. About this last phase, I think we have the same thing with respect to what I just explained. The focal length f of an object. Please let me pass. There's no time again to do all this stuff. Now, the focal length f of an object of a diverging lens, f is an object, is split as 2f from the lens. Which one diagram correctly illustrates the information of the lens? Diverging lens. I told you diverging lens, diverge. This is f now. It's displaced. The object is coming, it reaches here, it's diverge. The one coming through the center we move. This is the correct answer. I don't need to waste time. You can see the diverging line don't convert. This has convert. This has convert. Wrong. Now just watch. This has convert to wrong. This also has convert. Wrong. So the answer to the question is A from what I've just explained. Convex lens converge. Concave lens, which we call the diverging and diverging. This definition is called the principal focus of a lens, which I will talk about in the next words. One such. Now, the last question for this slide, I have three minutes more. The speed of light in air is three times 10 to eight. What is the speed in glass with refractive index of 1.50? We've talked about that at the beginning of the chart. After the refractive index is always C over BV. Velocity in what? In medium over in vacuum. A is our vacuum medium, the vacuum. Velocity in vacuum over medium. 3 times 10 is to 8 over, you are looking at the speed in glass. So it is moving from what? Air to what? Glass. So N was also given to be 1.50. It's equals to 3 times 10 to the power of 8 over X. On simplification, X will be equal to 3 times 10 to the power 8 divided by 1.5. 1.5 can go in 3, 2 times. That is 2 times 10 to the power 8. Meters per seconds will be your question. As I was talking about this, and that is why I was very fast to do that. So, guys, this is why I'm going to be stopping here. Sorry, guys, for, for the last two or three questions. I have to rush you guys it's because of time. Time is always a major constraint. Tomorrow, by the grace of God, we are going to look into the aspect of what we call the, the, the optical instrument. Then we talk more 
about all these lenses and stuff like that where you understand how it is being drawn and stuff like that that you need to go over so see you guys soon in my future video thank you don't forget to like subscribe and share the content to your friend bye and remain blessed